Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another mini PC, this on the higher end of the spectrum. This is the B-Link Sur 9, and this one has a Ryzen AI9 365 processor on board. And this is, as I mentioned, a higher end mini PC with a decent amount of performance. And we're gonna take a look and see what you can do with something like this as we work our way through the review here. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from B-Link. However, no other compensation was received. No one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $929. If you are buying this on Amazon, make sure you click on the coupon to get the best price, and the price will fluctuate over time. Now, as I mentioned, this has a Ryzen processor on board, an AI9-365, and this chip has a 10-core CPU and a 12-core GPU. There's a bunch of other AI Ryzen chips out there, and as you work your way up the numbers from 365, in this case on up, you will see slightly better graphics performance, CPU performance, and NPU performance, which of course are those AI hardware acceleration components. Don't get too excited though about the AI in the name. You're not gonna be running ChatGPT locally on this device, but it can assist in video editing and photo editing apps where some of those AI features come into play. This has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 8000 RAM, and one terabyte of storage, but the RAM is soldered on the motherboard here. This is an unusual thing for one of these B-Link mini PCs. Usually you can upgrade the RAM and the storage. Here, all you can upgrade is the storage. A little bit earlier, I took it apart. One other unique feature about this are the speakers that you can see there. They actually sound pretty good. And beneath that dust shield, you can see the two NVMe slots that it has on board. You can install additional storage. Only one storage stick will be in your machine when you get it, so you can add another. And it's always nice to see a big, robust heat sink over those NVMe drives as well. So very limited upgradability on this one. I think it might be an AMD requirement, uh, but either way, B-Link is selling this as faster memory than you would get if you had memory slots on board. On the front here, you can see the ports that we have available. So we have our power switch here. We have a headphone microphone jack. This is a USB-C 3.2 port. So this will do 10 gigabit per second, regular USB stuff. There's a faster port on the back and you've got a USB 3 port here. And then on the back, you have two more USB-A ports. I believe both of these are USB 3. You have a USB 2 port here, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, dual display output so you have a display port and an hdmi b-link says you can output 4k at 240 hertz out of those ports you also have a third option which is the usb c port here on the back this one is a usb 4 port so this will do video out along with higher speed data devices too this is also compatible with thunderbolt so if you have an external GPU that you want to use or something else that runs over Thunderbolt, you can pop it in the back there. And this port runs at 40 gigabits per second max. And then of course, you've got another audio jack there. The power supply is pretty compact. This is a 100 watt power supply and it is of the wall wart variety. So you might want to get an extension cord or something if you don't like plugging it directly in like this. The uh, prongs here don't fold up. The cable isn't all that long, but it's long enough that it can sit on the desk and you can have the uh, power cord plugged into a wall or something on the floor. All right, so we got the system now booted up. One nice thing about this is that it has a licensed copy of Windows 11 Pro. So you will get a decent Windows installation on this one. Performance so far, just kind of poking around in the menus here, feels super fast and responsive. And we'll look at more of its performance here in a little bit. What I wanna start with first though is a network speed test, specifically on the Wi-Fi, because this is an area where some of these B-Link mini PCs have suffered in the past. So right now, I have it connected to my Wi-Fi. I've got a super fast internet connection here. So believe it or not, speedtest.net is actually a great way to test network performance. And I'm seeing it slightly better initially here on the Wi-Fi, but we're still running lower than we should be. So we're getting almost to about a half a gigabit on the downstream but we should be seeing closer to 700 or more 
on the Wi-Fi 6 access point that I have down here. So the Wi-Fi performance isn't bad, um, but it's not as good as it could be or should be, uh, given what we see on other devices off of this same access point down here. However, a little bit earlier, we did test the Ethernet port, and at 2.5 gigabits per second, we are seeing the full power of that port, both on the downstream here at 2.3 gigabits per second, and I'll fast forward a little bit to the other part of that test where we were doing the upstream, and there we were also getting 2.3 gigabits per second. So as before, the Ethernet on this is fine. The Wi-Fi performs a little under where I would like it to be. All right, so why don't we start off with some basic stuff here. We'll do some basic web browsing and see how that runs on the machine. I'm currently running at 4K60, and as you can see, everything is very quickly popping up here, so no issues with this at all, and I wouldn't expect there to be any given what kind of processor we've got under the hood here, so that is a good sign. Now, I also took a look at YouTube with some 4K60 video on my channel. It is dropping a couple of frames here or there, nothing significant, nothing noticeable, but it isn't playing it back completely perfectly, so that's one thing I often look for. I do have the most recent drivers installed on this, and it's possible that we still have a few more optimizations to go to get things to play back absolutely perfectly, but uh, 12 or 14 now frames dropped out of this many is not something you're going to notice, and everything looks pretty good here as we are playing it back. Now, on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 28.5 against the prior generation Intel and Ryzen processors. This is a nice little bump in performance, not significant, but a nice bump. But you will notice that the Mac Mini M4 is still the top dog when it comes to this benchmark and perhaps web browsing in general. But still, the average consumer is going to notice just snappy performance on all of these devices. So web browsing, not a problem here. Now, a little bit earlier, we booted up DaVinci Resolve, and I found for basic video editing at 4K60, it does just fine as expected. You can see some real-time rendering of these transitions happening without any lag or slowdown. That's what I would expect out of this hardware, but you will find areas where you might want some more powerful computer or GPU attached. So for example, you can do things like this film damage effect here, and if I drop it in, we do see an immediate preview, but it takes it a little while to render out the video playback here. So we have to let it sit for a second, and then once it does all of its chewing, it starts displaying the image, but you do get a little bit of a slowdown. It's not playing back every frame and a little bit of lag here too. But, you know, it's not bad for a mini PC. Again, if you're doing a lot of color grading and other things, I think that's where having a more powerful graphics processor comes into play. But for simple edits, like the kind of video you're watching here, mini PCs like this are just fine. All right, so let's take a look at some gaming now. I'm running Cyberpunk, which I just got the other day on a Steam sale. And surprisingly, at the lowest settings, at 1080p, we're getting close to about 60 frames per second here. Now, of course, Cyberpunk does a lot of stuff in the background to make these games run at a somewhat decent frame rate. And of course, we have some driver optimizations that help out here as well. But still, this is a very playable frame rate here for this game. And as you'll see in a minute, benchmark-wise, this isn't much more powerful than some of the other Ryzen and Intel Core Ultra base machines we've looked at recently. So not every game is going to run as well as this one does, but games like Red Dead Redemption 2 can generally be run at good frame rates. And if you want to get at a higher frame rate than what you're landing at, you can, of course, turn settings down or adjust the resolution down as well. But all in, this is a very playable experience here on Cyberpunk, which can be a very demanding game. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 4,038. A decent score here and on par with what we saw out of an HX370 on another mini PC we'll be looking at in a few weeks, along with a recent Intel Core Ultra 7. So gaming performance, for a mini PC at least, is quite good here and actually on par with what you got out of a GTX 1060 GPU from a couple of years ago, yet we're consuming far less power. So right now, this machine is drawing about 95 watts with the game running here, which of course is maxing everything out, um, but still very good performance for the amount of watts that it consumes. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a score of 97%, and that indicates we see very little thermal throttling with this, even when it's under heavy sustained load, like playing a game like this. 
The fan noise is also very quiet on this one. I'm hearing the fan, but it's barely audible. So if you've got your game music and sound going, you're not going to hear this thing running at all. So a very quiet fan. It looks like it's cooling itself down efficiently and power consumption under load is quite minimal. And its idle power consumption is not bad either. Sitting here at the Windows desktop, not doing anything with all of our updates done, we're looking at about 10 to 12 watts right now if I check my kilowatt. So it is very power efficient, both under load and at idle and in between. So it's quite a departure from the uh, Mac uh, trash can we looked at just a couple of days ago here on the channel. It was running about 76 watts at idle. So the amount of efficiency we're seeing out of modern PCs here is quite impressive. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its support for alternative operating systems. I've got the latest version of Ubuntu running on here, and all is good. We can load up the Firefox browser, for example, and see how the performance is on this thing. And we'll maybe pop open the LibreOffice uh, Word alternative here too. And what I found with this is that it feels just as good as it does on Windows, if not a little bit snappier. And all of the hardware is detected properly. So we're getting audio, we're getting Wi-Fi, the speaker on the uh, unit here works. Uh, we're getting Bluetooth. The display is properly rendering at 4K. So, so far, so good here insofar as alternative operating systems are concerned. And we can, of course, play some video back here and uh, move some things around. So all good here on the Linux side. I think if you are looking to maybe dual boot this where you've got one drive running with Linux and the other with Windows, that is certainly a possibility as well. So all in. A very nice experience here, both on Windows and Linux. So all in, this is a very nicely performing mini PC from B-Link. I've looked at a lot of B-Links over the years, and I've always found their stuff to be pretty nice. I like the industrial design here. I do wish the Wi-Fi performance was a little better. Again, that's a problem we see on many of their products. But performance is great here. Efficiency is great. The fan noise is super low, even under heavy load. The gaming performance is good, too. One thing that I would look for though, if you are in the market for something like this at this price point, is just take a look and see what comparably equipped laptops you might find for around the price point here. Because you can often dock your laptop with a display and get a very similar experience and have something that's portable as opposed to a mini PC, which is portable in of itself, but you also have to consider dragging the display around with you too. But all in, very nice performance here. I love how quiet it is and how efficient it is as well. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.